Well, flights between Australia and Bali remain disrupted after a volcanic eruption at the Indonesian island of Flores. Virgin and Jetstar cancelled all services to and from Bali today, citing safety concerns. Qantas and Garuda Indonesia say flights remain scheduled but have been delayed. Mount Lewatobi Laki Laki erupted on Sunday, sending plumes of ash into the sky, and winds carried them hundreds of kilometres away to Denpasar Airport. It's left many passengers stranded. Unfortunately, no assistance whatsoever. So if you try to rebook flights, it's impossible on the website. Nobody answers phones. So you leave a bit stranded, you're left stranded. And for more on the eruption, we are joined by volcanologist Ray Cass. Ray, good to have you on the program with us. Now, this volcano has been erupting for quite a while. It is expected to uh, keep going. H how long uh, can authorities expect this volcano to keep um, active, I suppose, in this way? Yeah, this volcano erupts intermittently every decade or two decades. And this current phase of activity commenced at the end of last year and has again... Uh, along that pattern, been erupting intermittently every few weeks. Uh, and of course, this uh, most recent event began on the 30th of October. The biggest event uh, during this uh, current uh, stage of activity was on the 3rd of November, which sent a massive plume of ash and gas eight kilometres into the atmosphere, and then activity subsided and then has been renewed every few days. So the problem is that these types of volcanoes, which we call stratovolcanoes, can be very complex, they can be unpredictable, and their eruptive activity is, is typically this intermittent style of a significant explosion every few days or so. Uh, so at the moment, it is a, a very difficult to actually predict when this activity might stop. And is it increasingly hard to predict over, you know, uh, looking at... Uh... Uh, the study of volcanoes over the past few decades? Yes, uh, volcanoes are extremely difficult to predict in terms of when they will erupt, for how long they'll erupt, what the eruption style might be, and what the eruption intensity might be. In, in the case of Lewatobi Laki Laki, we have been seeing huge plumes of ash going as far as Denpasar. What are the, what are the immediate dangers of the ash clouds especially around in the areas that surround the volcano itself? So since this uh, phase of activity began on the 30th uh, of October, there's been significant ash fallout on the upper slopes of the volcano, several kilometres from the actual crater. There have also been ground-hugging pyroclastic flows of gas and ash and rock debris, which have been channeled down the steep, sides and valleys of the upper slopes of the volcano. And this has actually caused quite a lot of destruction to many of the small villages which are perched on the upper slopes. And this is a big problem for the authorities. Uh, the volcano occurs on a remote island called Flores, which is very vegetated, has limited uh, road networks, uh, very limited infrastructure to facilitate significant evacuations. Mm. And how long do you think authorities have been um, surveilling this volcano? Or is this something that, that is just a part of what authorities do there? Yeah, well, Indonesia has more than 120 volcanoes. I checked this morning and that in addition to Lewatobi, uh, six other volcanoes were erupting as well. So their resources are fairly stretched. Uh, they do a very good job given the resources that they have, the population they have the incredibly diverse nature of all the islands that make up their archipelago. So it's, it's a difficult and challenging job. But as I say, generally, they do a very good job. Yep, and, and what's also difficult and challenging is for residents that live around the area. Some have decided to relocate uh, permanently. But how big a task is this to convince residents in very active volcanic areas uh, to move? particularly in developing countries like Indonesia, uh, where these villages are perched high up on the slopes, it's because that's the only area of land that the uh, small populations and villages can actually claim to be their own. So in the first instance, it becomes extremely difficult to convince these people to leave. Often they have stock, they have 
uh, gardens to, to tend to. So they're very reluctant to leave. Um, but, of course, in this case, there's been significant loss of life and injuries uh, and a lot of damage to those villages. So most of those villages have started the evacuation process. But undoubtedly, when the eruption begins to wane, those people will want to go back to the only place that they can call their own. And Rick, has, are there other areas, other volcanoes that are being closely watched in light of uh, this particular eruption? Yes, there, there, are, there are a number of eruptions going on in Indonesia at the moment, including Marapi on Bali, uh, Marape on Sumatra, um, uh, Simbagong, and, and a couple of others. And so these are all currently active and undergoing the same type of surveillance. And one of the interesting things about Lewotobi eruption is that it's very distant from Bali. It lies 500 kilometres east of Bali on the island of Flores. So this may surprise people as to why the airports in Bali are being closed down and flights being cancelled. And that's largely because at the moment, obviously, there is a prevailing east to west wind system which is blowing the ash from Lower Tabi 500 kilometres west to Bali and causing uh, problems for all flights. The suspended ash, which occurs dispersed in the middle atmosphere, can actually cause severe damage to jet engines of, of aircraft. Yeah, safety first. Uh, Ray Kaz, really good to get your expertise this evening. Thanks very much. Thank you.